Good morning, Jill here, hoping to make a not too long video geeking out on fountain pens. Uh, Carol A, I believe, asked me to give more information about my favorite pen, my Twisby Eco. In order to tell you why it's my favorite, we just have to have a brief discussion about fountain pens and inks. So, I hope it's something you're interested in knowing <laughs> and that I'm not going to totally bore you. So these are my fountain pens. These four are the Twisby Eco, which are my favorite. I'm not sure, uh, Jin Hao, my son gave me this one. This is a Monteverde um, Monza, a fancy uh, dragon pen, two shark pens, and three Lamy, so, uh, Safari and All Star. To sum it all up, why the Twisby is my favorite is they don't dry out. I can leave this pen in my case six months and come back and the tank is nice and full of ink. All of the other ones dry out. The only other one that's coming in a close second is this one. Still has some ink in the tank. Not a lot, but it's got some, so it didn't completely dry out. The others, I'm telling you, two or three months, you open it up, every bit of ink is dry. Oh, and I didn't mention the Jane Davenport. The Jane Davenports are a little cartridge and they dry up within a matter of weeks if you don't use them. You have to like clean it up, load it up, and use it consistently. And I don't use my pens that way. I, uh, you, I, you can see I don't do that much art. I couldn't use all of these pens consistently and not have them dry up. So I think, you know, I will keep these other pens and I'll use them one at a time. Like this one right now is currently filled with a cartridge, so I'm doing some black. But I will never buy another one probably other than these Twisbees. So. Moving along, not only is it the pen, but it's the pen and the combination of ink that makes this one my favorite. This is Platinum Mixable Ink in Earth Brown. And it bleeds out like an elegant writer with different colors. If you've ever used an elegant writer, once you wet it, it bleeds out to blacks and grays and pinks and greens, and I just love that. So let me show you some examples. This is a little uh, handmade journal that I started back in 2018 and didn't finish it, so I'm working now to try and finish it, and let me find my first. This page was done in 2019 with this Twisby and that mixable brown. I hope that's all in the, there. I hope that's all in the screen. And see how it bleeds out? It bleeds out to those pinks and, and light browns. It's just beautiful. And let's see. I also did this one solely with this I just did recently, maybe last week, week or two ago, solely with that Twisby pen and the brown ink. Uh, this one here. I did with the pen, but then sometimes I like to go in with a coordinating watercolor, but I was away from home and I didn't have my favorite watercolor with me. I had my Renaissance. I like these Renaissance paints. They're really nice. They're a German, but they don't have the exact brown. I was using this brown here and you could see it's a much pinkier. I mean, I like it with that, but it's not a perfect match. The one that's a perfect match, let me put this aside. The one that's a perfect match is my Danielle Smith. Let's see, they're my little samples. The transparent brown oxide is a perfect match. And maybe on this page, I'll show you how sometimes I start with the ink pen and I switch over to that. And I have another handy little trick while traveling. You don't even have to have your watercolor with you. I have traveled using the ink from these pens, squeezed out into a little palette and used them like watercolor, which is pretty cool in itself. Oh, sorry, that was probably really loud. So, for this video, first let me show you. Hmm. I gotta put something down here. Just in case of mishap, here's a piece of jelly paper. So the Twisby pen, the top screws off, some of them just pop off. Um, comes in all different colors and all different styles. Uh, there's no cartridges. It's a built-in ink tank, which I like that as well. You don't have to buy a converter. These sell for, I should have looked it up before I did the video. I think these sell for only $30, um, which I think is a really good buy. Oh, I'm going to have to edit this out. I cannot get this open. Okay, I'm back. 
I had to take that and run it under hot water. It tells you how long since I've opened this, and this still has usable ink in it, which is a good thing. So now that I can get this open, we can get back to demonstrating. The back of this is a plunger, and I never remember which way plunges up and which way plunges down. Okay, so counterclockwise is pushing the ink back out. See how it's... I'm going to do it over here for you, because when I was traveling and I wanted to paint with a brush instead of with a pen, I just squeezed a little bit out like this, right into my palette. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to squeeze all the way down. We're just going to push ink back into my, so I can refill my tank completely. So you just wheel it all the way down. This can be a messy job when you're... I, it's a good practice before you refill to clean your pen, but for today I'm just going to do it without cleaning it. Especially my inks that have like shiny, sparkly stuff in them and little bits of... They really need a serious cleaning between loading. You can't just do this and have them not clog up. So now see my tank is nice and full. This will be good for me for months. Then you take this, just wipe the excess off, and you're good to go. It's really pretty easy, um, and this bottle of ink <laughs> is going to last me probably the rest of my life. And I have a different bottle for each of those pens you saw, except for black. I haven't picked a really good black yet. I'm fussy about black, and you got to watch when you're ordering ink for pens because it's made for writing. And a lot of people want their ink to be waterproof or close to waterproof so their writing doesn't get destroyed. But for art, I want the ones that are as water soluble as possible for obvious reasons so what are we going to do today i had a complete brain cramp there and couldn't find any words so i cut the video and started again i'm just going to do a quick loose face i uh, don't know i guess i could talk and paint at the same time talk and draw but i really don't know right now what i would talk about um so you might just get some music here and enjoy this part and you'll see, look, I'm drawing really sketchy. I No pencil lines. I don't care if it's wonky. I don't care if it's even. And you'll see why. Because the style I want to paint this in today is totally a mess. So enjoy. I'll be back when it comes time to use the water.
Okay, doesn't get any looser than that, does it? <laughs> I don't know why I did her face tilted with no lines. Whenever I do that, you notice the eyes are just wrong. You'll see me, I went back several times to try and, I don't care, it's all right. When you see this finished, you'll see that it, it doesn't matter. It's not that kind of painting. This is really just a demonstration of how the pen works. Now to get this loose feel that I like, this very messy, not realistic look at all, I like to use a nice big brush. It forces me to not worry about details. I could really push it and go with this brush. Look how big that one is. Uh, but I think I'll use this one. It is a size 16. I can't even read that. Something's master. Oh, master's touch round. It's nice and soft. It'll hold lots of water. If I have to, at certain points, I might go back with like a fine detail one, but I'm going to try not to. So I'm going to keep a clean towel handy in case I want to blot some off, because when you blot, you get more of those colors I talk about being uh, different shades of brown. Now I'm going to use a lot of water. Now today on this paper, it's looking very yellow, which is okay. If I blot, you get more pink. You see that? But then I think I took too much off of there. I'm going to have to go back and add some more ink because now that eye's got like nothing left. But that might help me fix the position of those two eyes. I work fast. I leave hard lines. I leave blooms. I leave places where the ink almost washes out what I've got going. And you might be thinking, oh, right now that looks pretty bad, but just wait, it'll be all right. I'm going to try and not turn my page around because I don't know if I'll keep it in the camera view properly or not. Hey, anyway, there's a hard line there, it doesn't bother me. And the hard line there I might get rid of. Soften off this around her face. Go back in. Now, part of the deal is I'm going to have to let this dry. Look, that got really extra weird around her nose and this eye. I will have to let it dry and come back and change some things and that's okay. I will be surprised at how some things dry and uh, pleased at some of them and not so pleased at others. I think the part where I was just drawing, I think I might not speed that up. I might put music, since I wasn't talking, you know, edit some music in. But I want you to see how quickly I worked and how quickly it went. What do you think? So, she's still wet. I can do two things here. I can go back in with some of this ink that I squeezed out here. And add it back in that way. And since it's wet, you're going to get lots of nice effects where it runs and moves and goes where it wants to go. In order to get a sharp pupil in the end, I will have to go back in with the pen, I'm sure. Yep, she needs some darks there. She needs some darks here. Put some of her mouth back in while she's wet. Now, I'm doing that with a brush. Let me show you, if I were not using a brush and this pen, I was just using the pen, I can go back in, even while it's wet, and get some. Now, you got to be careful of your paper at this point. Your paper is nice and sopping wet, so you got to not, try not to dig into your paper. Let's see. This is where I might make a little bit of nostrils. Even this, this piece of white over here does not bother me at all. I like it, it's very impressionistic. But I will put some lines back in her hair. It's not real wet there, so those lines will stay. Let 
Yeah, see, I'm not liking those lines there. I wish I had not put them. So let's go back. Oh, I might need a little more. All right, squeezed out another drop. I make sure and, and wipe my pen off so it doesn't collect in the lid because you'll be surprised next time you open it. All right, get some of the water off my brush. Let's put some nice dark in here. That works. That works better than trying to make the lines. The other thing, like I said, is that color of Danielle Smith watercolor really coordinates nicely with this as well. Instead of squeezing some of the ink out, you could just get out some of that iron oxide brown. Okay. Now, there's a good example of where I'm going to give you a nice close-up. Those lines from that pen dug into the wet paper. Uh, if this was a serious piece of art that I maybe wanted to sell, or this is just in my my journal, um, I might worry about that. But then again, I might not either. It's actually a, a form of texture, right? I'm going to let her dry a little bit, and uh, let's see. Nope. I have to go to work. I'm going to let this dry overnight. I'm going to come back tomorrow and finish it up. Okay, it is the next morning. I'm ready for another work day. I work Monday to Friday, 12 to 8.30. So if I'm on the ball and get showered and dressed in the morning, I can have a little bit of time to work on a video. Um, and it's Friday. So hopefully this video will be ready for Saturday. So here I am. I had to think about, you know, what more I want to do with her. Um, look, at, look at the colors that bled out on my napkin from that ink. It just shows you all the different pigments that are in there. So, she's all dry, and I kind of like her just like this. Does she? Only, I think she only needs a few more touches. I'm going to try and put some very, very darks back. Now, the paper is fragile. I can see it wanting to uh, flake up. But, remember, this is not really watercolor paper. This is mixed media paper. I probably would do better. if I had real watercolor paper. I don't know, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> it's all right. You notice I reassure myself a lot. It's all right, Jill, it's all right. I think that might do it, but what she, oh, well, here. A little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit here in the corners. I think what she really needs, though, is some of the whites back into her eyes because I tend to overdo it with the darks. So you can use whatever you want to put the whites back in the eyes. You could use gesso. You could use white acrylic paint. Um, but just remember, this ink is always going to reactivate. Once you wet it and it dries, it's not. It's still not permanent. It'll continue to re-wet. So I'm going to try this big Posca pen. Um, and if it needs a second coat, it needs a second coat. And if the ink keeps soaking back up through it as it dries, then I just go back in with something heavier like gesso if I don't like it. But I'm just going to make those two white dots even. And I think I lost too much here and too much here. You can see it's even getting on my... Now, we'll probably let that dry. You can see it's already browning out. Maybe I need gesso. But I could also let that dry. Put on another coat of Posca and see what happens. Um, I like her just like this. Now, if she were part of a bigger page, you could add more around. I will doodle around or draw around or add other elements. But if this is not your style, this is what I'm into right now. I love it. If this is not your style, I want to show you real quickly. You can do it more traditionally. And uh, to save time, I drew her out last night on my dinner hour. And I was much more careful. Let me move that. I 
I decided to stop and try and bring you in much closer so you can see better what I'm doing. I'm still going to try and use this big brush. If I really, really wanted to be fiddly, I guess I could go to a smaller brush, but let's see what happens. What I have to do is make sure it's not so loaded with water that the water's flood flooding all over the page. So I'm going to blot off a lot of water and I'm going to start slowly and carefully. This is if you want a much more controlled look. See how it just blends right out. Now there's a hard edge. Now this is actually watercolor paper, so it's going to behave a little better than the mixed media paper. Um, and see how you can go back in and soften that out. I like to start on the areas that have tons of ink because that kind of loads up my brush. If you're going to try and pull some off of a single little line, you're not going to get as much ink flowing or moving. Soften that out. Make her eyes brown. I left an awful big highlight. Let's make it a little smaller. Okay. Nose is where I always like to get messy. So let me try and control myself here and make it more, I'll call it more traditional looking. See how now it's nice and soft. It's not all that craziness of my other picture. Pretty, huh? Let's see. Got to be careful. There's a lot of ink on her upper lip. If I hit that too hard, I'll have ink everywhere, which is what I love. But I'm trying to avoid right now. <laughs> Let me turn her around. It's just easier. Outside the lines there. That's all right. Make it look purposeful. Put a little light color back there. <laughs> make it look like I did it on purpose. Some of those lines are showing up in her neck. I don't care. Smooth out her eyebrows a little bit. Now... I should have got them set up and wet ahead of time. I'm going to show you, since I discussed it, the Danielle Smith uh, Transparent Brown Oxide, and we'll do her hair. We'll do her hair with that. So let's see if I can quick, oh, I'm running out of room on my table here. Okay, it's this one. Look at that nice color. It really matches well. So, let's see. I'm trying to decide what I want to do. It might hit the next page here. I don't have any backing paper in there. But look at that. I love it with this. She's going to have big hair. Do a little more. not an exact match but it coordinates pretty nicely I'm going to grab a little bit and see if I can 
smooth out some of those lines in her neck. I like that. Now, I drew this, I drew the original face last night, but uh, trust me, I did not spend a lot of time on it. And look how quickly we have a little journal page going here. I could add some other elements. I could add some writing. I'm just messing around now. I guess what I want to say is I really believe in playing and experimenting. The first one I did, the other girl, you know, you never know what you're going to like until you try it. You do a page like this, and you play and you let it here let's switch back out all right so she's pretty cute isn't she i really like her too you play with a page like this let me get rid of my brush and you pick out parts that you like and parts that you hate okay i, I dug into the paper lesson learned um it only takes this paper only takes so much but there are other parts where it bled out in colors where it bloomed you know, she's got a point coming out of her lip, but I love that. Um, so you don't know until you just play and try. And if you absolutely hate it, just sew it over. Or don't do it in your journal. Pick up a scrap of watercolor paper and just play. And, and it doesn't even have to be a face. This could be flowers. This could be a dog. It could be anything. Um, so just give it a try. And it doesn't even have to be a fountain pen. I did this about the fountain pen because of request, and I love fountain pens, but you could do this whole thing with just watercolor. So let me know what you think. Give it a try, and uh, maybe, ooh, I just bumped the camera. Sorry about that. And maybe uh, you could show me some of your art. I will go and edit this, and here's a close up. And, uh, Hopefully have it ready to go by tomorrow morning. And thank you all for your support and your kind words and your views. And maybe I can keep this going again and keep making videos. See you soon.